I've taken this one inch stock and turned it down to about 950 and I provided a step on there and I simply did that with a cutoff tool so that it will fit and align with the, uh, the bore. So now I'm going to drill those four holes then I'll part that off and this will fit right in this little chuck. I really like this little chuck that is in the uh, rotary table. I can tighten that down and I've already found the center. Make sure you get it in there straight. When I installed the rotary table I aligned everything so that the center of the spindle is in perfect alignment with the center of the rotary table. Not that I want a hole in the center but you can see that is Perhaps you can't, but it, but it is right in the center. The whole center is 380 thousandths from the center out, so looking at my uh, readout, and that can be done with the dials also, I'm dialing in 380 thousandths right there and locking the table. Now there isn't a whole lot of uh, room for error here on this little step. So now I'm ready to drill the first hole and I am on zero degrees. So I'll drill the first hole, just spot it, and then I will crank this to the 90 degrees, drill another hole, and 180 and so on. Then I will redrill them with the clearance size. Now it would be better to drill both with the combination center drill and then the, uh, the final size be without moving the rotary table but that just requires so many tool changes that uh, I object to it. So let's run through this real quick. There's hole one and I'm cranking at 90 degrees there. Hole 2. Cranking at 90 to 180. Right there. And then 2. 270. This is the final size, that's the number 33 drill, which is the clearance size for a 440 screw. And I've set the depth stop because I'm only going to drill in about a quarter inch. And I'm starting on the 270 degree, that's where I left off. You can see I'm not going in very deep. And I'll crank her around until I'm back to zero. there. And I'll do the other two off camera. And now I'm parting it off at uh, eighth of an inch thick. Well there it is, and I think you can see there's just an awful lot of work in a little piece like this. You can spend a whole hour on, on that. 
and there's a step on that side. I just got a little bit of deburring to do yet, and that step will allow it to center perfectly in the bore. Like that. And it will be oriented like that so that the uh, head bolts do not interfere with the cross hole for the uh, port, the steam port. Well, it's uh, 4.30 and I'm done for the day. Got to go up and see, uh, watch the news and see who killed who. And uh, see you in the morning. Howdy, it's another day and another dollar. Before I put the head on, and that's where I left off last night, I'm going to drill that cross hole right through here, which is the steam port. And I've already uh, taken my height gauge, which was set on center here, and transferred that over here as such. I love this little height gauge, although it's brown and sharp. Somebody cut it off. It used to be real long, but what I like about it is uh, I just uh, will set it with gauge blocks. It certainly is a vernier, but it's the old style 25 uh, graduation, which is a, a total nightmare to read, especially when you're 70, or 70 years old. So uh, I'm just using it uh, in a more manual sense. I mean, I can read that, but it, it's just so fine. The more modern ones are 50 graduations and are satin chrome. But this was only $10. The uh, cost of a meal. And then I took a combination square and measured it in 3 16 and now I will center punch that, take it over to the drill press, and drill all the way through into the bore. I'll be right back. I won't show that. I have been asked numerous times what kinds of fluids I use for drilling and tapping aluminum. This uh, Alumatap, and there's all different brands of that, uh, that work quite well, but it's a costly. Kerosene is much cheaper, so I use uh, white kerosene sometimes, like you use in a heater. And uh, did you know that Henry Ford used to use kerosene as a hairdresser dressing back in the olden days? I wonder what uh, Clara thought when she kissed him. The smell. But that newer kerosene is more odorless. And uh, WD-40, just plain old WD-40, and I got a whole gallon of it that somebody gave me, and sometimes I put some of that in the can. That works... Uh, very well too. And doesn't smell very bad either. I like the smell. Matter of fact, so now I have drilled that hole, eighth inch, the steam hole, the steam port, all the way through. I need to plug the outside hole just in this wall. Now I've done that different ways. In this one, if you recall, That's just, get the light right here, that's just a piece of aluminum uh, rod, filler rod from welding, and I crimped it a little bit, distorted it, tapped it in there, put a little Loctite while I was at it, and then machined it off later on. And it must not extend into the, the bore here. But on uh, this one, I'm going to take, uh, this is, a, is an aluminum screw, 832. So I'm going to drill that uh, hole just in the outer wall. Number 29. And tap it. 832. Put a little Loctite on, on this and uh, screw it in there and let it set and then I'll trim it later. I hope some of you guys on the other side of the world are enjoying this. I know the Americans do. All right, I've tapped the hole, 832, and uh, again, this is an aluminum screw. I just happen to have a nice selection of them. 832, I already put some Loctite on it. Get that started, if I can. Boy, I had a hard time getting that screw started. Now, when you put that in there, make sure you don't uh, let it come all the way into the... Uh, the valve hole and uh, I need to ream that just to clean it up where I have tapped it and I have and then I'll just take my 
side cutters here and uh, cut that off. Aluminum cuts real easily. Take it over to the belt sander and uh, take that down. And that's sealed for life. You know, I make my own castings. Well, I guess you knew that. And I don't have a whole lot of control over the metallurgy because I just use scrap metal and and uh, baguettes and bagash methods here for my uh, my gating and all of that. But I do end up with defects, uh, and I just overlook them. But in a thinner or in a thick cross section like this, and I told you that that is problematic because I could not core this hole. But if you look on the bottom here. You know, there's quite a few uh, defects there. Well, I could care less. That's just, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, a cosmetic. But some of that has come into the bore. If we can see that. Let me get some white paper behind that so we can see it a little better. It's not showing up. That's better. See how nice the white paper reflects. But can you see the uh, defects there in the bore? And again, it isn't going to hurt a thing for this little engine, but of course in, in industry or something that somebody's paying for that would not be permissible. And that was of course a hidden uh, defect. I suspected that I would have some little problem there, with, again, with the thick cross section. Now, if I was a painting man and I was going to paint this, which I, I, I do not like to paint, I've told you that before, I would fill that with a little body putty. But uh, for an engine that runs on four pounds of uh, pressure, it isn't going to hurt a thing. I have a set of transfer punches in uh, number sizes as well as uh, fractional. Notice how small these go, and, and they're all bent up. Of course, I got these used. But using the number 33, which is the hole size drilled in the head, I will proceed to put the head on. And uh, that's what I like about this uh, little uh, cut that I made here. Now, this needs to be oriented such that I do not uh, drill the holes in this manner like I did on this one as I told you I have uh, one screw that interferes with the steam port so I am going to orient it like this now you can lay this out uh, use a little square to check that and, all, and so on but I'm just going to eyeball it it will be close enough and taking the transfer punch and I think you all know what these are simply put it in there and uh, tap it, which is a little bit out of the camera. There's the center punch mark. That's not going to show up on the camera, but there's a little center punch mark there. And I will proceed to uh, drill that. Uh, number 43 and tap it 440. Now I'm just going to do the one of them to start with. Then I will uh, have it drilled and tapped and put a screw in there and then I'll transfer the other three so there is no chance of movement or misalignment. Now I understand not everybody has one of these little camera on micro drills but perhaps you have a, a, what we call a sensitive or a, a smaller drill press that you can use to, uh, to drill a sixteenth inch hole because and, and uh, the whole vice of setup here uh, dwarfs the little drill press. But the, uh, these holes are going to be precariously close to the wall of the cylinder. So I already drilled uh, that first hole that I showed you, the center punching, and I just went in an uh, eighth of an inch deep. But I established the hole. And now I'm going over to the other drill press and drill it uh, with the tap drill size. And here's the setup on the other drill press. And notice that I have uh, already set the depth stop. Drill them good and deep so you don't have to deal with a bottoming tap. So I'm drilling uh, probably three eighths or even a half inch deep. I'll go ahead and drill that hole that size and uh, then tap it. 
Take your time when you do this now so that you don't break off a tap or break into the uh, bore or do anything that will spoil the work because it's most discouraging especially as you get this far along in a project you don't want to ruin it and you may have projects where you have bought expensive castings and you're doing this and you may not even be able to, to uh, replace the castings notice that I'm going in plenty deep I can feel it hitting the bottom and I'm going to back it out. Don't break it off when you hit the bottom. That's a, a problem. Now if you're using steel, tapping steel or cast iron or something a little bit harder and I mentioned this in the other video open up the hole a little larger than what the, the charts call for so that you don't get a 75 percent thread maybe you only get a 60 percent thread but it's still going to be plenty strong and so much less chance of breaking the tap because you can see here how very very close I am to the bore and that's one of the reasons I reduced the size of the bore because some of these that I made were a 5 8 bore and uh, when you do that uh, the wall thickness or where you, where you tap your hole is going to be very very close in other words the wall thickness right here just becomes so minimal and on this one I even made it only a half inch bore so I had no worry at all about breaking through so consider that with your dimensions I'm using these little uh, pan head flat head screws this time rather than the socket head but I have plenty of both of them in stock that's why I'm doing that but we'll see what the appearance looks like so that's what we got now it's looking pretty good this thing cannot move you know I've got uh, some black marker on there so that hole is going to remain the same just in case there's any little discrepancy in anything I, I will always assemble it as such I'll put another witness mark here on the bottom with a file later on and now using the transfer punch and my brass hammer I'll proceed to transfer the other three and drill them as I showed you previously first on the micro drill press then on the Walker Turner drill press and tap them you know uh, none of these little tips that I'm giving you here are available I don't believe in any kind of textbook now there might be some little a machinist magazine or something like that uh, that will have some of these tips but a lot of this you just got to learn by watching other people or come up with it on your own but I've drilled those three other holes and now uh, just as a possibility I submit this for your approval that uh, I put the head back on and I'm tapping right through the head and using it as a tapping guide or a tap guide just a little bit a uh, better chance of tapping perfectly straight so I got two more to go then I'll blow the holes out and I'm not sure if I showed you this already but I have sanded off this plug that I put in here I've blown the holes out notice that I put uh, a witness mark here with a three corner file and that will always go down toward the base when I assemble it just in case there's any uh, minor amount of misalignment now I'll go ahead and uh, put all four screws in and see what it looks like and I'm happy and uh, the reason I'm happy is because I didn't break a tap and that is a always a time for rejoicing next I'm going to turn my attention to the uh, shaft the main shaft and uh, this is just a temporary mock-up here so that shaft isn't any good but I cut this off two and a half inches long it's just 3 16 diameter uh, coal roll and it's a little longer than what I need but uh, the purpose is that later on I might put a little pulley on the end of the shaft so I wanted a little extension and if it's too long I can always trim it later on and I'll polish the shaft just a little bit uh, 
with some emery cloth so it spins a little freer than that. And then I'll start making the crank uh, disc here, followed by the piston and the connecting rod.